Good morning. It is my privilege to uh, interview today in Bal Ben Chaim, uh, whom I know for a very long time, but I still wrote some points about her short CV. So I'm going to read it first and then we're going to chat for a while. So I've known in Bal for more than 20 years, but possibly more officially since she first came to the Freedom Project I was directing in Binyamina in around 2003 to learn trapeze. I had the privilege of being one of her first trapeze teachers. She then continued to study further with Roni Kalev, first at the Free Dome for a couple of years and then at Shabazi Circus. She stayed there for several years before moving to France to do her professional studies, first at Piste d'Azur, then in the Knack in Chalon, where she specialized in vertical rope and from which she graduated in 2017. During those years, I also had the privilege to be her Bouteau teacher, then director in one of our own company shows, Somewhere and Nowhere, which we co-created with Arkaos and which was co-directed by Guy Carrara and me between 2012 and 2013. She toured that show with us in Israel, France and South America before going back to finish her studies in France. Since her graduation, she created and has been performing with the show Racine, which she co-authored with Jean-Jacques Minazio, produced by L'Attraction Company, and is still touring and performing with David Amar on stage with her. She is currently in the process of creating her new project, Pli, which was laureate of the current Circus Next edition of 2019-2021. Okay, how are you doing? Well, good. Um... <laughs> to make this conversation and to 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 have this time with you also. yeah like, <laughs> like uh, making this loop of uh, it's funny i i heard you talking about all those different um cascades all these different uh, uh roles that we play in the life of each other and it's yeah. really very interesting it's really nice i feel like we continue to to switch hats to switch roles and to in our development of of life uh, path so it's really nice absolutely absolutely and that's just you know it's just uh, the tip of the iceberg as they say because uh, you know we have a lot <laughs> going on between us no matter what the distance no matter what the map between us so um and so i wanted to ask you uh uh because we have this beautiful quality time thanks to our community <laughs> and you <laughs> luckily we have the own community with us so uh it's great because you've been part of this community for a very long time and you you had a few roles in this community you assisted in our latest production of the company you know you were an artist in the company you uh, um, i was personal you know, assistant many many things like uh, you were you, my personal when i was yeah, 18 that's... years old and uh, personal assistant and babysitter and the same yeah, time yeah um, so i feel like a big role of development of the company of <laughs> and of the family yeah absolutely absolutely and it's interesting because our personal lives and our professional lives mix all the time and this is a subject i'm really really interested in because i'm working on this pro training program about the balance between personal and professional life and there's something about our relationship and also the community at large but i think our relationship is very exemplary of that that there's something really respectful between the people in this community about our professionalism and our personal life and the way we exchange our skills, exchange our assistance to each other, support each other. And it's something really, really strong um, that we have. And um, so, but uh, I really want to focus on you because it's true that you are a very important part of this community, but I'd like to throw the ball to your court and ask you, so how's it going for you, the balance between your personal and professional life at this critical moment in time where you just became laureate of Circus Next, right? Which we all know is not a very uh, 
calm thing to be, you know, when you're a laureate of Circus Next, you know, many things happen. But I know many things started happening in your life already when you just started this new creation of Plea. So uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Uh, wow, it's uh, it's a huge huge uh, subject, and I'm not I'm not sure that I'm the person I can share about how do I um, go through this uh, this subject and these challenges. Also, I'm not sure that I'm like the best um, idol to about balance between uh, work and personal life and and good mix because I'm dealing with some challenges also like everybody and um it's only like uh yeah it's gonna be four four years since i came out from school so it's um not so long time um uh i think this For me, the more I the more I uh, get into this uh, profession and this daily work training, um, this world uh, that I was dreaming since I was a teenager, but now I get to to dive into and to live it. Um, I I find that uh, maybe this way of life is the most radical thing uh of uh, creating of touring of being a nomad uh of being a nomad or, or not only geographically but also between projects between moments of inspiration and doubts between um working with different people between um having different roles uh, as an interpret or a uh, creator or um um leader of a project and everything is very uh in movement all the time everything mm. is very variated and very exciting also but very uh few daily life <laughs> very <laughs> this is how i ha i live like i i feel in this moment um things are really diverse and really beautiful and so much new experiences and so much new meetings and collaborate collaboration and uh, but very few um, daily life as some normal I don't know like the stigma that we have some on, on normal uh, um, yeah like uh, uh, daily routine yeah uh, so, uh, and this is, uh, it's funny because it was a dream of mine, you know, my, my father, my, my parents are been nomads for many years. My father is kind of nomad still. Um, and we've been nomad also in my childhood. Uh, we've been living in India for a few time. And, uh, and this wish of circus dream for me, I think that the, the nomad place was a big uh, dream for me mm. and uh, which have realized in, in a way. And when it realized it was a big, big realization. And uh, in a way also, I find today that I, uh, it's not so easy to find the balance and to find the rhythm and routine inside this very uh, movement life, uh, find the center, uh, find your uh, um, support point, and also to construct things, uh, to have this line of constructions of things in life um, where it goes like all over. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think now I'm in my home uh, and I'm really happy to be at home. It's uh -huh. kind of rare. Uh, I have really a lot of, lot of luck and lots of privilege in this time of COVID, which many people, it's not so easy for also for our profession to, to keep working. And it was going just um, very luckily for us in plea that 
uh, we could continue to do residences uh, in this time. So the work have mostly um, quite a normal um, development and we, we didn't needed to cancel a lot of uh, work. Shows, yes, of Racine, of course, a lot, but mm -hmm. the residences was still um, going. So I, I kept working and it's a big privilege and we're very thankful but also to be at home and to have moments of um, it's not emptiness you know and a void uh, between all the other things that happening uh, it became very important it became very uh, appreciated mm -hmm. so when you're at home um, what do you do to balance the, the for the work so when you say uh quietness or silence what do you mean i mean like if you if you had to think how what what are the things that assist you in in this balance to create the balance what helps you what do you know already what did you find what what can you do for yourself that assists you in balancing between the intensity and the, the constant movement uh, and the constant change of spaces, places, people, et cetera, et cetera, of your professional life. And then when you come back home, what, what helps you? What do you do at home that uh, can then possibly maybe nourish your professional work? Did you find anything? I would say that it's a mix between um, <clears throat> taking care of many things that which is more complicated when I'm on the road or in on work and it can be the production uh, things uh, admin administrative uh, things um, or even um, taking the time of uh, digesting and uh, dreaming um, about the projects, giving space to, to echo, giving space to, to resonate uh, things that have happened. Um, and I became very <clears throat> um, with lots of uh, belief uh, that those spaces that I just give the time to to echo uh, what happened or what is about to happen, uh, they give me a lot because they allow me to um, integrate mm -hmm. things that's going on in my life and not to jump from one thing to another in a rhythm that sometimes I don't get to see the big, uh, the big picture, mm -hmm. and um, I have the very uh, chance to be able to train where I live. Mm. Uh, there is a circus school just nearby, uh, a circus oh. amateur school uh -huh. uh, with a small uh, space, but it's really beautiful and very beautiful people and people that Fantastic. are getting around. Uh, so some, some way, uh, like going back, you know, to train on the rope, it's not so evident when you're on the road, uh, mm. even that when I'm on uh, residence, so we have some uh, physical uh, rhythm or touring a show. So of course it's a training is a part of the thing, but uh, there, there is not a part of just training for myself to reconnect from my, for my body and without any aim of something else. Mm. So this is something that uh, I really, I really love. I love to go running. There is the, the field just, uh, just nearby. And I think the last thing is, is not to program. Uh, I think mm. uh, I'm in a, I'm in a, uh, when, when I'm on the road, it's something very, very programmed that, okay, this day I need to, uh, I'm there this day, I'm there. This day, it's going to be that. 
and when I'm at home, if I can allow myself to have really this um, improvisation and more spontaneous uh, way of uh, way of life, uh, it's really helped me to find some uh, some balance and uh, like leave things to happen and not be the motor of many things. Mm. Well, that's interesting because my next question would have been, do you have a daily routine? And what you're saying is, no, I prefer not to, or am I correct? Did I understand correctly? When I'm at home, I prefer not to have a routine so that things happen spontaneously. And that's a contrast to your touring life that is very plan yeah i i don't have a daily routine um not when i'm home and not when i'm on the road because it's so different mm -hmm. i think in a way the routine or the something that i really um try to put in my uh, like a rhythmus uh, that can kind of stabilize me is the working with the body and I have some specific uh, preparations when I'm starting, when I'm warming up, uh, which is not just a warm up to the to the muscle or to the body, but also uh, to reconnect with my to reconnect with not only with the body, but yes, with with myself, which mm -hmm. with all that what it means. Um, and this is quite uh, protocolar. I, I have some protocol of of uh, of starting the this warm up or uh, which um, something that can be a little bit like a meditation, but in with in my body. Um, and uh, and the, this, this is this is something you do when you tour and when you're at home. Practicing this is project. something. This is something I do every beginning of warm up, and I'm quite a maniac on warm up because uh, I was injured because I I in in my I broke my cartilage in the, in my shoulder mm -hmm. a long time ago, like uh, five six years ago, and um, and it happened because I worked not. Uh, in a rhythm that was quite crazy without uh, taking the time of warm up that was necessarily for me. And since then, I am really completely uh, maniac on, on warm up and not only uh, muscularly, but really to take the time to get inside uh, the physical work or the aerial work or the creative work. So this is something that I do no matter what, uh, even if I'm going to perform uh, 10, 10 minutes, uh, not aerial, not rope, uh, improvisation, something. So my warm up is really like, I think this is the part in my life, which is really Rosh Bakir. It's, it's not moving. <laughs> it's Rosh there. Bakir, Rosh Bakir, I will just translate, it's head in the wall. Rosh yeah. Bakir, head in the wall. It's a Hebrew expression saying, uh, just, it doesn't matter what, that's what you do. Like, yeah. head in the wall. Yeah. No need to think about it. Like, no yeah. mind in Zen, you know. So, um, uh, that, this is really interesting, what you're speaking about. And I'd like to elaborate a little bit, because I think many emerging young artists uh are living this kind of very sporadic way of training if they were not injured you know people who are injured do have a different attitude towards their bodies and the way they work but since you know this is one of the things that i really want to uh to stress that we speak about this a lot in the creators lab in the pro training that we're working on I really, really, really want to elaborate a little bit about that. One, my first question is your injury. Uh, how did it affect you? How long did it, can you speak a little bit more about this? Um, uh, how did it affect your work? How did it affect your life? 
and how long did it take to heal? How long did it take before you could go back to training uh, at the same level that you trained before on the rope? Um, did you go back to train at the same level that you trained before on the rope? What it changed in the way you work on the rope? Everything you can say around that injury. I think that's a very important parenthesis that we need to open. And then second, uh, if you have something to say to young artists that were not injured yet, uh, it, if to prevent injury and um, and to think about maintaining their body and their instrument, the whole being, their whole being is their instrument for a long, long term, because you know we all know from history that the circus artist's life. Uh, career is normally a short, supposed to be a short career. But I think that where we are at now, we can learn from the experience of others and we can prolong those careers in many different ways. And uh, so it's, it'll be nice if we open that parenthesis to your generation or even younger and see what we can you know, what doors we can open in their minds so that they can reflect in other ways on those things. Wow, it's a huge, uh, it's a huge uh, subject. Yeah. And I think in the same time, I have many things to say and I will say, but in the same time, I, I want to just to, um, to say that today I'm, I think the, the best uh, way to say that I'm over uh, this injury is that I'm I'm not thinking about it all every day or it's not such a big presence uh, in my daily life and of course I learned so much about with this uh, injury and today I'm even quite uh, thankful for that um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but in the same times I remember that Maturin, uh, Maturin Bols which was um, our director of uh, the end of the year, end of, end of studies on CNAC. Uh, when we talked one day and it was the end of the CNAC, I was already uh, recovered, but still it was very, very strong. The, the injury in my life, in my, I was really attached to it also in my identity in a way. Mm -hmm. And he told me, you will see one day you will forget. Mm -hmm. Not completely. But in your daily life, you will forget that uh, that it happened, and that will be the moment that something yeah. else, uh, like the recovery, is over. And yeah. I'm happy to say it's it's happened. Uh, so because it's, it it could be some quite dramatic also uh, story. So I would I will I would share also the things that I was going through. But just to say that uh, I'm really happy to say that uh, this story, this drama is still in me, but it's also over me now when That's I have beautiful. this. Uh, yeah. It's great to hear that. It's great to hear that because we didn't speak about this. You know, normally we speak about things like that, but it's great to hear it in this interview. So I'm really, really happy. And yeah, and that said, which I really think it's a very important part of recovery, the moment when you, it's not uh, such a strong part of your life anymore. Uh, uh, and it's really, yeah. But uh, it's interesting uh, to speak, you know, that's like the beginning of the after. So, but it's interesting to speak about the before and then what happens with it. There's so much happening with it. You know, I know quite a few people who were injured and that it completely changed the way they work. So it's important. And I think that being grateful for it now from where you are is also um, an important part of healing and recovery. Yeah. So uh, for like the story, I was, I was, I got injured when I was in a surgery school in Piste d'Azur in my in the beginning of the second year, um, which is quite like in the middle of, of the school. Uh, it was in a repetition um, for Circa, 
we were creating we were creating a, a short uh, form of uh, 20 minutes with uh, three others uh, students and we have very few times like it was quite in urgent uh, rhythm we talked a lot we uh, um, repeat a little bit we re-talked a lot we repeat a little bit and then we said okay like a general rehearsal in five minutes because we didn't have lots of time so uh, we've been like oh okay uh, okay okay we we do everything that we need uh, like we will be to 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 keep uh, timing and everything and um and if I if I look at myself before uh, the injury, I was very, very, very ambitious. I don't know if you remember me as as a younger uh, before going to to uh, to France. And I, I think I had many dreams and I was very a little bit hard with myself also sometimes. Um, we're saying uh, now I get to succeed something. I really need to. I give everything. I was quite radical also with no. Uh, you say uh, uncompromising. Uncompromising. Yeah, uncompromising with myself and uh, you know in in some way I really I felt it's a big quality that I have and it what brought me to work hard on things, but in the other uh, way. I was um, a little bit hard with myself and not very in listening to my body and not very listening to my um, to my needs. Um, and I was very uh, in, a, in a place that want to uh, fulfill a demand of school, of ambition, of some uh, of the society of circus of what is a good rope, uh, uh, good rope uh, artist. Uh, and I really try to form my body for this uh, with uh, a lot of ambitious to ambition to, to go uh, far. And in a way, the, the injury was very traumatic in this side of things because um, it took me quite a time. So what happened, I was I was on the rope and I uh, did like, a, I was not very good, like very warmed up. I did a, a movement which demanded lots of strongness, lots of uh, force. And I heard like, and I, I was sure it was like my t-shirt or something like this. And so I was like, hmm, mm, I don't know what that. And everybody looked at me because everybody heard it. And um, and then I started to feel weird in my in my shoulder. Said, hmm, I don't know what that. This is something I never felt in my body. Maybe I should go down on the on the floor. And we stopped the general rehearsal and uh, little by little, I started to have to have the pain, and I understand that something, you know, that there is also these moments uh, in injury of circus uh, artists that the moment that you understand that something big have happened, um, like a big injury, that now it's gonna change your few next time to come, that you're not gonna do your plans as as planned, and there is something like. Okay, okay, okay. Um, change plans, like, and this is kind of of injury, mental, also I find, mm -hmm. uh, because we're such in a control place where we we are training ourselves to control things um, in in air, in juggling, in acrobatics. We are so about training and controlling what we are doing, which is necessary also. But then it's a moment that we cannot control anymore. Something and have happened, and it's not our control. I cannot decide. Okay, I will catch all my muscles, and it will be okay. No. Sometimes we try. Uh, sometimes uh, when it's a tendon, uh, when is a like an inflammation in the muscle, we try like not to pay attention to the to the um, to, to the sensation to the 
to the things that is going on and but it's not working finally this is a, a moment that our body is telling us something stronger than what we tell him like do a salto uh no <laughs> and it's not because you're not strong enough is because something else going in the body which is more important to listen to and that's important i mean that's really 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 important because uh many people don't know that and uh, for me it's really important to stress because be, because our body is our instrument we really 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 need to take care of it i remember myself saying this to your teacher ronnie many many years ago saying our work is so hard we have to treat ourselves well go and get a massage you know you're working so hard so hard you're working so hard with your body you really need to treat your body well body of course it's a mental thing it's your mental game it's your mindset it's your calm it's the way you approach things of course it's very difficult to do this when you're young and ambitious it's it's easy to say from where i am or from where you are but it's really important to understand first of all that our body is our instrument. If we don't take care of it, it will be out of tune, out of tune, just like a guitar that you don't tune. It's more complex, but we need to take care of it. So I just wanted to make that really, really stress that point. Yeah. And I think for me, it's not only to take care of, uh, of the body in which of like good well well eat well sleep get a massage have some rest but it's also to develop a, a, a listening tool of your body which is quite mm. a, in in a fine balance because we are pushing our body all the time yeah. and many times uh, we have muscle pain and not injury uh, but it's not comfortable to do circus. It's not like, no. yeah, easy and fun all the time. Of course, it's fun many times, but uh, we are pushing our body. And but for me, it means that we have to have to have this other side of balancing about listening to the body. And it's like yeah. a dialogue, uh, a conversation all the time. Like, OK, I would like that we will do that. Are you OK? How, how are, are you, you with me? <laughs> How are you yeah. today? Do you do you? And even after it's it's get for me, it's get beyond because our body is for me. I believe that our body is so much more clever than our mind. Uh, and in listening, while listening to to what's going on already in the body, we open doors that we could never open if we just tell him what to do. And this is a different uh, um, relationship. And for me, um, I was I was long time injured. Like uh, I think the whole process from the moment that I was um, injured uh, until the moment I I got operated, I I did an operation uh, and all the recovery. It took a little bit more than one year and a half um in that's a long Zoom, time in, especially when you're in the middle of your studies yes it was like almost one year in piste d'azur and almost one like half a year a little bit more in chalon and even after this one year and a half i just restarted to hang on the rope so it was all this process of re rebuild uh, my capacity physical and mental and uh, dealing with the frightening uh of re-hurting myself um but what i want to say that i it was very long and for me it was out of question that i stopped working this moment like uh i i couldn't uh, accept that okay uh i will just wait it will pass um and for me, it was um, necessary, mostly, I think, uh, mentally and no, also physically, uh, it was necessary to, to, to keep moving and to keep doing things. And OK, yeah, I couldn't do my speciality, which is quite difficult when you're in a circus school. 
because you have also like everybody around doing their things, getting getting better, and you're like, mm -hmm. and it's passed with lots, lots, lots of frustration. But I think I I had the power to continue to work uh, with this uh, frustration, and it was not easy. But also, uh, Pista Azul uh, did accompany, follow me, uh, accompanied me really, really beautifully, and they trust me that uh, I do the, the right work for me. And uh, so it was, so this dialogue, this relation with the injured body, with the non-perfect body, with the uncapacity, uncapacity body, uh, we had a long <laughs> time. To, a long time to, to dialogue. Yes, to dialogue. and. And it was all the time on question of, uh, well, can you do that? Um, not so much. OK, uh, can you do that? Oh, yes, this I can. Like I started to work a lot with my finger toes on the rope uh, and with my jarret because I couldn't hang on my on my uh, shoulder. And I worked all sometimes really very low uh okay uh can you be on like not hanging but on the, um how you say uh, appuyer um uh, even leaning leaning, leaning. so how can i lean on the rope so i made myself like uh, some um loops and knots when i can get inside and it developed all uh kind of work with uh, like a marionette with a dress that i did uh, after um i started to do different things i started more to write to draw uh to take pictures i was also it was very dif difficult time also i was kind of depressed and i mostly i i felt that uh i was very ambitious uh before and i needed to let my dream go like i said okay i even in the end of Piste d'Azur, I really didn't thought to go to a superior school because I knew mm -hmm. I will go back to Israel and I'm gonna do the operation and everything. And I was really with this um, uh, uh, doi, evil, how you say? Um, mourning. Um, I was mourning, mourning your ambition. Uh, uh, you were mourning your ambition? Or, yeah, uh, not, not my ambition. Or the dream, dream? Or the dream that I had to to be like in a superior school and to be the best rope blah, blah, blah. and it was so important actually because um i had to give up your dream um, the, the, what was important or to have to change it maybe i don't know if it's completely to change but it was a big accept acceptance of what is going on now and not being in this frustration all the time that I will never fulfill my dream. I will never uh, uh, be what I wanted to be. Um, I had this very specific image of what, you know, uh, what is it? And we talk about this a lot in, in Buto, that, yeah. that to work without image and yeah. to see what's going on and, and to make it happen, to, to, to leave the place that to happen and for that i remember that i when i was uh, struggling also with my mind in our buto <laughs> buto lessons that it was one of the things that was the most difficult for me is to to let it go this i want to do this and in a way i feel it always uh, really important for me to have an inspiration to have this will to do something to have a curiosity but this is like uh, uh, the ed the edge of uh, of uh, of the rope. I don't know where it will go. It's the it's the edge. And for me, it was really important to let it go. The image of I want to do this. I want to be that. Um, and when I started, when I let it go, things started to happen like i had uh, i had a proposition from a company that i really 
dreamed to to work with uh, to 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 continue to to do some creation. Uh, I had uh, I said okay I will I will go to do the auditions in Chalon in Lido because it it's it's absurd I will never get in I'm injured. And I was like, no, no, I'm I'm here for the fun, you know. I'm I'm not uh, I'm not in the merots. I'm not in the run. I'm here the just race. For the, You're yes, not in I'm the here race. just for the good energy and to 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 profit and to uh, and to learn and to meet and and that make like miracles, like amazing thing. It's 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 allowed me to come just as as who I am in the moment and to bring the best of it. And I think this is what worked in the selections and made me to get finally to the school. And, um, and effectively it's, it changed all the way that I worked on the rope because um, I, I really couldn't, I couldn't ask my body even before the operation or after, I couldn't ask my body like, yeah, do it still, like go. I couldn't have this uh, relation with my body of pushing myself too hard. And I needed to be very, very respectful uh, for not re-injuring myself. And uh, so it's all the time was question of what is possible. And all the time uh, question of, um, what my body wants to do also uh because i i it was really important for me to keep moving my body uh get really down when i'm not moving so what is possible and what he wants to do and it's really like uh yeah yeah like like a child that you you ask him okay so what 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 you said no 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 so, okay so what you want to do and if you really listen so it's really like a big creativity that comes out. And I really, I think this is something that stay with me uh, really strongly today, even that I'm very well in my body, even that I'm uh, straight with uh, getting a warm up, a uh, very long warm up. I'm really straight with doing my shoulders exercise because if you're an aerialist, you need, you need to do a shoulder exercise to, the, to, to balance your muscles because we are all very, very close and you need to open. But this is another subject. Um, and inside all that, I, 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 never, I never came back to do the same work that I was doing before the injury, but I'm really happy for it, actually because uh, before the injury, I was really pushing myself doing things uh, that was not, my body was really not happy with. Uh, like I was uh, in a moment, like the dynamic work on the rope is, um, and also now it's very um, fashion, in the fashion of, of technique. Uh, when yeah, we it's a trend, talk, it's a trend. A trend. Yeah. When, when we talk about like high level technique on the rope, we talk about dynamic. And this is one family of, of technique on the rope and it's amazing. Um, but it wasn't more the most natural for me. And I really tried to push myself to be that because I wanted to be like the most uh, incredible uh, rope, blah, blah. And uh, and it's funny because uh, today I do some dynamics, but it's just for the fun and not with without any pressure to to be the best or and I accept my my stronger uh, sides, I think, uh, and the places that my body amuse more. Um, And uh, and it's funny because before I told myself before before when I was very ambitious all the time I I told myself I need to put myself uh, out of comfort uh, out of uh, out, out of, of your my, comfort zone yes out of my comfort zone out of my um, strong places 
uh, I want to discover new things and which is really great also, but uh, with the injury, it wasn't, I was already very out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. and it was uh, more about, okay, so I will follow uh, my, my small comfort inside this very non-comfortable uh, mm, situation. And, and I thought it will make me lazy, it will make me not to develop new things, to, to stay in the same, uh, to stay in the same thing that I do all the time because this is my comfort zone, but actually not at all uh, by, by following this small uh, uh, feel, uh, this small like uh, line. line, it, it brought me or so, thread, so thread, much, maybe. Yeah, thread. following this thread, uh, it's brought me so to so much new places, uh, which was more in, in acceptance of, of myself and more honest with myself and more stable also because it was very well rooted ab about who I am and what interests me. Um, so it's, yeah, it's really, it's really changed a lot in my work and in my life. And so I can I, I can I can I ask a question about that because yeah. I think I I do want to ask you to speak about your current creation which is Pli and I do think there is a huge relation between your injury and the theme of that show and there's a lot to say about that show uh, which is still in creation but uh, can you speak about that a little bit? Can you translate plea into English for the English speakers in the audience? And can you speak about what it speaks about? And, and, if, and if it's related to your injuries, I think it naturally is. Related to life. <laughs> As injury is part of the life. It's, yeah. yeah. Uh, plea. Uh, it means a pleat in English or a fold. Um, and it's a creation that uh, I do with two uh, plastical artists, uh, Alexi, Ma Alexi Martin, which is, uh, no, Alexi Mera, uh, Domiti Martin, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Alexi, he's a paper folder uh, as his uh, profession and also engineer. Um, we were, we met in Chalon in 2016, uh, quite by, by accident. And, uh, we started to work in this moment, uh, on the, the, the crossroads between paper and circus, uh, specifically on hanging on paper mm -hmm. and to do aerial work on paper, uh, pure paper. And Domiti, uh, she's a scenograph and also plastical artist. And we know uh, from a common, uh, common friends. And uh, we already collaborate from the, for the scenography of uh, Racine, my first uh, project after school. And uh, she became part of this, uh, of this team, uh, based team of Pli. And in Plea, so we are working about um, developing a new apparatus of circus made 100% of uh, paper. And we work specifically on the hanging, aerial hanging from paper and aerial movement on paper. And this is kind of a pretext, uh, a context for us to talk uh, about questions of uh, fragility and strength. Uh, of course, of the matter of the paper itself and would it hang or would it break apart, but also um, of uh, our body, of the fragility of our body, of our uh, planet, of our daily life, of life in general, because I find life, it's finally the most fragile matter that can change and break in any moment or 
or became very, very, very strong, much more than what we think. Uh, but finally, this is something that uh, inspired me a lot and made me the will to work with uh, and to put myself in a place where nothing is evident uh, as life, but sometimes we forget it. Absolutely. So um, that's beautiful. So where are you at now in your creation, in your creative process? You um, just, you were a laureate of Circus Next just uh, two or three weeks ago, three weeks ago, maybe. Uh, so you got notified of that, uh, but uh, tell us where you're at in the process of creation, when the premiere is planned. Um, so just just to, to answer your last question, uh, uh, I think the injury is, is, as I said, it's part of the of life. And for me, it was a some moment that was uh, fragilizing, fragilized by, by events. And it's um, obliged me to work with this fragility and to accept it and finally feel it became a force. It, it became a power or a, something that really make me rich in experience. And um, I think this is something that developed my belief in fragility and in fragile things and the will to share it. And uh, now we are uh, quite in the last part of the creation. Uh, we have four residencies left and uh, like the last, um, well, we can say five. Um, and we are about the moment of writing and um, working on the dramaturgy and um, choreography, uh, the gestural um, part of, because we are, we are building the apparatus of paper on stage. So we are really dealing between this world of um, more movement and choreography and this very plastical concrete uh, gestuality. And mm. this is really what interests me to have uh, in echo this, uh, these two worlds because I'm really, uh, I admire the gestuality of uh, artisanal uh, work. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so we are kind of in the writing time. We present 30 minutes for Circus Next uh, uh, selection, and it was already a very good exercise for us uh, to, uh, to put things together and to try to see what's working, what's not working. And so now we are trying to take it further and, um, because the final show will be more or less one hour. Uh, so Yes, we are, uh, I think we are in between the moments of uh, choosing the material that, um, because we have lots of materials and lots of apparatus and we need to make a choice. Um, so in between like searching a coherence about different images that we have and see what it's, uh, which echo it makes and to see how, uh, um, how to, put uh, these uh, subjects and this will, how, how the, the will to talk about fragility on life gets to be part of that and gets to dialogue with the images that we create. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's a kind of mixture of these two. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to show some images of this work in this video because you're speaking about this and I have in mind because I saw this presentation you did for Circus Next and I have in mind all these beautiful images of the paper hanging and you know and you rolling it on stage and constructing and the whole space transforming with the papers and and you in it and Domiti and uh, Alexi also on stage so it uh, will be nice to maybe show an extract of the, that, uh, maybe in the, in the teaser to this interview, maybe we can do that. 
you 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 can do it uh, technologically uh, you know how i can try it will take me time <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm going through so many learning curves lately so you know this is one of them i can try to do that it's possible so um I want to, be, because we've been speaking for quite a while now, and uh, I know that the long interviews, not everyone can listen to. So it's one of my projects to cut the interviews to shorter pieces so that people can look at what they're interested in. But I do want to ask you if you have any tips for emerging artists that just start their creative life. If you have to, you know, the, the, the you know, maybe the tip or the two, three tips that you would give any emerging artist that is uh, creating, touring, um, uh, discussing a lot with institutions, supporting or not supporting or submitting proposals for grants or, or for support or, or, you know, anything, anything that is, you know, any tips that you may have for any emerging artists. So fresh out of school in the professional world? Uh, wow. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge. Yes, it's a challenge. It's, it's uh... yeah, I think uh, um, something that talks to me now, it's, uh, it's this question of uh, how to, also how to follow, how to accompany um, students that go out from school, because just last week I told you I've been in Piste d'Azur, I was giving classes uh, for uh, two very beautiful, beautiful uh, rope artists um, that are gonna go out from school like now in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was funny to do, to give a, a workshop uh, just two weeks be before they finish school. Mm -hmm. And we were working a lot about these moments of going out uh, from mm -hmm. school. It can be interesting for your um, um, program. <laughs> for my pro training program. So yeah, you know, yeah. Once we have uh, the the page on the site ready, I'll send it to you, and you can send to me. <laughs> we're it's still in the works. It's not. Yeah. yeah. So one one thing that I I I talked a lot about uh, in this week to, to Lucy and Thais um, uh, is the possibility to go out from school and to take the time um, and to have this small void, small nothing, and not being very pressed to go out from school and having work and having projects and uh, fulfilling the dream and uh, also fulfilling the the, the uh, like waiting or uh, attempt how you say like uh, waiting, the, the expectations the expect expectations, the expectations um, of uh, of being a good circus artist um, because uh, the time of school is such a fool with experience and sometimes uh, we need also to take the time to digest it mm. and to see what is what is for many for many people also for me i think it was the dream was to be in a, in a circus school and uh, when we fulfill this dream which is already like a big thing it's also mm -hmm. a time of request requestioning ourselves okay so okay now i learned so much and I had many experience, so what what do you what do I want to do now? And I feel it's also easy to fill the expectations uh, when you go out from school and to fulfill it. And um, sometimes we are in the terms of having work, of having work on having like uh, money to live, and 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 it's okay and it's important. I don't say not to to deal with that but um to permit this small space of nothingness uh and to before something else starts um uh, mm. I, I i would say not be don't be in a rush keep moving and keep um um animate 
the, how you say, uh, alimenting, um, aliment nourishing, feeding, nourishing, feeding, uh, yeah, nourishing the, um, the curiosity, uh, the will of new meetings, of new experiences to keep to, to, to make some of these experiences. And even if it's like a professional or not professional, every experience is finally is a part of us and we are creating with ourselves. So having this, uh, this part of continue to, to follow this uh, line, but don't press yourself uh, too much because we already press ourselves a lot. And it's okay to have this moment of nothingness. For me, it was necessarily after school. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think to be honest, it's something that's, it's the, the something that I feel it really support me in the moment because also we are working in a, in a field of many expectations of many, um, way of, uh, way of, um, mostly like working with institutions. So in one moment, I think it was important for me to learn how it works. Okay, if I want to talk with institutions, I need to know how to present my project. I need to know how to present myself. I need to know uh, all these kinds of things that we learn in this profession, if you want to be a creator, nevertheless. And at the same time, it was really important for me to say, okay, and how do I stay who I am uh, inside of that? Because when I see what, um, what is the demand, I can also very easily to say, yes, I will just fit myself to the demand. But in a way, it's, um, it's, it will not be me anymore. So it's mm -hmm. a very fine balance about know how to talk this language uh, and at the same time stay very honest and say okay if it will not work in that way from the moment it's okay if it will work in this time in this I, I feel for me this this sensation of honesty it's really important because it allows me to feel that uh, no matter what happened I gave I made the best of myself mm -hmm. I made the best of myself yeah yeah that's clear listen I want to ask you uh, if you can give us like uh, three of your main sources of inspiration for your work for your life for your work. wow this is very cruel because, cruel uh, because oh, you need yes. to choose three yeah <laughs> Well, we don't have the time for 20, you know, so. <laughs> um, okay, I will, I will not say like the top three. It's just uh, three that comes in my mind. Uh, okay. So we are not being hierarchic uh, thing, but I, it's funny because um, since a few times I really want to do this list of also people ah. that influenced me and was a part of my path uh, from close or more far away. So one day I would do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's I important. Think, it's important to think about it when you're yeah. a creative artist. It's really important. Yeah, 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 yeah. And to understand why also. Yes, and I, 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 uh, I will say also the context why I, without getting inside the subject, but the, the, the moment I wanted to do it is uh, when all the, the there is in, in, in the circus field in France and in Europe, and even uh, more than that, there is uh, this very big uh, uh, questions and um, in this moment about uh, droit d'auteur and uh, author, yeah. uh, author's uh, rights yeah. rights and uh, uh, the questions um, all around the, the work of Johan Bourgeois and many things that were said uh, about that that I don't want to get 
too much inside, but I will say the way it infected me uh, when I read and talk and everything, it made me said, wow, okay, actually, uh, I want to, I want to, to thank and to tell so many people that influenced me and was a part of my work. And it's so important for me to name them uh, mm. and to give them some um, place and respect uh, in my work, uh, even if it was a small part, but surely it's, it made me who I am today. And mm -hmm. to, sure. to, to, in a way, to, to declare that we are all kinds of the same nets and it's not possible to separate things, but uh, it made me really uh, the will to name it, said it's you and you and you and you and thank you and you have a place of what I do today, even if it's different things. So still, if I need to <laughs> choose three uh, people, um, I think um, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I will put you in the same uh, frame because my very first uh, um, inspiration that made me will to do circus and aerial, it's you and Ronnie. I, mm -hmm. I, when I was like 13 years old and I saw you in the trapeze on the, in the Freedom Project, it was such a big moment of my life, also maybe of like a teenager life that is about to ask myself, uh, what do I want to do and who I am? And I found something so um, precious and so uh, just, just uh, 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 something very accurate, accurate uh, uh, while watching you. And it was like, wow, it's speaking so strongly to my body and soul and I changed my life. Uh, it was really a moment that uh, completely, I was stopping all things that I did. <laughs> if I said I was. <laughs> and it stays a, a source of inspiration many, many, many years mm -hmm. from close and even today from far away. So, and I still talk about it. I told you that last, last week I was talking about you, about all the, about the, all the, the work we did with the bouton and the rope and i think even today i go back uh, to these seeds that were planted uh, all the time and it made made so big part of my roots thank you <laughs> thank you but i meant like uh, inspirations like you know inspirations for your work you know yeah i understand what you mean about us but uh like you know authors or or choreographers that you know or not 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 um not forcibly people that you are in contact with or came in contact with but maybe just people you read or you know like artistic inspirations <laughs> i mean it's not that i'm not i'm very very moved by <laughs> by us being in your inspirational list <laughs> very 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 much and grateful for that and i feel privileged and humbled and everything but um yeah I, in that sense i meant yeah I but I, it, it, it's important for me to say because even if today we have different uh, relations i feel this was a, a huge inspiration for me when i was starting uh, circus and it was the impulse a very very strong impulse uh, so even if today our inspirations are changing and developing all the time, but uh, in the moment when I was uh, 13 or 14 years old, you've been my inspirations because it was before we were working together and I was small and you were big and... Um, it makes me think we should have Ronnie in this conversation too, yes, actually, but she will see it, so... Ronila, we love you. <laughs> you are with us. <laughs> like, yeah. I think um, as someone uh, who really 
change for, for me also it's it's easier it's it's um as i said something in the chronology or in the i can say about people person that inspires me now but also uh it's interesting for me to talk about the path uh about people that really inspired me in my way in my in in also in the past in my discover of circus um because it's really it it built me um as an artist and i think the the first time that i saw fanny soriano uh mm. on the rope mm. and um after uh, afterwards some uh, shows that she did uh, with uh, Etre, uh, Fractal, uh, Phasm. And uh, the first time I saw her on the rope, it's in, it was in a show of uh, AOC, the company AOC, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Montpellier, maybe, I don't know, 2012, um, in Autochton. And uh, yeah, it was the way that she was moving on the rope and the way that she was doing rope uh yes resonant me very touched me very deeply i said wow i i found a part of me inside that or part of my uh, living uh, soul i don't know um mm -hmm. And uh, the way that she's working with matter and uh, and images uh, and surrealism to to talk about uh, things in our world uh, and it's uh, I I find it's very very powerful and she's also uh, one of the first uh, women that did and developed the art of vertical rope as we know it today uh, mm. within. Uh, Valérie Dubourg, uh, Fred, uh, some 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 women's very strong women that uh, uh, develop this art uh, that uh, I'm I'm I was learning I was uh, specializing with. Um, and the third one, the third one. Um, I would say that uh, this also something that comes for me now in my mind is uh, uh, the and, and and is in touch with many things uh, with Pli and where I am now is the um, meeting with uh, Bauke Levens, which is a dramaturg, uh, Belgian uh, dramaturg. Um, for circus uh, mostly, uh, we met in Chalon. She, she made a conference a uh, few years ago, and um, and this way of uh, looking on on body of circus and our relation to body of circus. Many things that I'm talking about today and made me so uh, coherent uh, with my uh, body and and the uh, history of injury and a uh, question of uh, how how we treat uh, the body in uh, postmodernism uh, circus and the link to the classical circus in a way that uh, where we uh, uh, dumping the animals and uh, in a way we continue to dump ourselves uh, tame, you as, mean as, tame, as, tame the elephants yeah. and the, yeah, yeah, the animals and tame ourselves. <laughs> tame. Yeah. Brain to 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 succeed yeah. some some years and yeah. um, uh, this uh, this I think she was one of the first people that I heard talking about uh, the way that we are treating. Uh, the relation that we have to our uh, body and to our um, the objects with uh, with whom we work is a reflection of uh, the relation to our that we have to our um, space um, surroundings and uh, the people 
that we are working with and the the objects in life and the atmosphere around us and the elements uh, like the, the natural uh, or not uh, like it's it's a reflection uh, and it's all about relations and uh, respecting or using or profit and uh, that's something that really inspired me to in my develop of my relations to my the body the rope or the matter and space um mm -hmm. which is in more uh, um um i would say humanistic way or um yeah love of of uh, willing to have uh, a listening and a dialogue uh, instead of mm -hmm. using and uh, fulfilling something with uh, with the matter or with the object. Mm. Nice. Mm. Good. Listen, I think we will end here because it's a beautiful end to this conversation. And uh, I know us, we can go on for hours anyway. So we're not going to tire everyone with everything we have to say. Um, so I want to thank you for taking the time to, for this interview, because I know you have a very busy summer ahead of you starting next week or something like that. Yeah, where you, we it's are going to be the first uh, date of uh, Racine uh, in Rangis, in nearby Paris, and it's a really like a big joy. Yeah. So may it all be realized and that your summer will be full of performances. And I wish this to everyone that is listening, that is a performer, of course, in Europe right now, because here things are already starting to, to move. So, um, and um, I love you very much, very, very much. But of course, you know that. So, and it's been a joy and uh, we'll talk soon again, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I want to like to to have this moment to thank also to you because um, like we know each other for such a long time and I feel uh, we have this connection through time and no matter if there is some years that we are more uh, in our uh, trajectory uh, different I I think we we know that we feel that uh, we have this connection and this that is always here and it's really absolutely. a pleasure to be part of it. Absolutely. Thank you for all the support. It's one of the biggest presents in my life, our friendship. As absolutely. Well, you as well. And you are a big inspiration to me as well, you know. <laughs> it goes both ways. <laughs> so with this happy note, bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Don't work too hard. Enjoy every moment.